Thank you for introduction. And I'd like to thank uh, organizer, uh, especially uh, Dr. Nochi and, and Dr. Kitazawa, for inviting me here. And I'm not sure whether I'm uh, fitting to this symposium for agriculture immunology, but I'm a specialist for vaccine science and adjuvant uh, research, uh, working on the vaccine uh, for uh, development. But today, I will uh, be focusing on initially for the uh, innate immune recognition of nucleic acid and what does it mean for the uh, biology and medicine. Then later on, I would like to give you a couple of story uh, unexpectedly uh, developed into the different um, aspect. So I'm from Osaka and we call this Nibion, uh, which is National Institute newly developed for translational research including biomedical innovation, and combined with the National Institute of Health and Nutrition. That's why uh, Dr. Kunisawa tomorrow will uh, provide you more about uh, nutrition and immunology. And more in the vaccine science, uh, that uh, I belong also to IFREC Immunology Frontier Research Center in Osaka University. <coughs> so from this April, we the, the new center uh, uh, was established in Nibion called Vaccine Research, uh, Vaccine and Adjuvant Research. And the uh, uh, um, feature of this institute is that we have like a big uh, primate center uh, with 2,000 uh, crab eating monkey colony and also uh, specialized people for translational research. Uh, why we need this team? is because if you want to make a vaccine against some certain microbiome, mi microbe or other uh, target, uh, you cannot do it by yourself. As you see, you need to be a specialist for producing protective antigen and adjuvant into certain delivery vehicle. And then you need to be professional for producing through these national regulations or organizations. And then you need to have a knowledge about human immunology and a special uh, knowledge for target disease and uh, as well as vaccine technologies. The light blue suggests, uh, shows the, um, the technology related to this that includes a lot of different type of uh, science and technology. And I'm going to focus on the adjuvant uh, research, which may be uh, related to uh, innate immune recognition science. And I, why I took vaccine as a tool to do science, because it gives you a, a little, but a very unique opportunity, different from the microbial infection, for example, in spatially. Uh, the reason, you know where you immunize, at when. So you know what happened, what's going on in injected site precisely. And then uh, this immune response doesn't occur at ejected site. Rather, this uh, draining lymph node is the primary place to prime the immune response. And then that uh, primed immune response is distributed systemically to the body. Uh, whereby you are uh, ready to combat against the infectious disease or agent coming from the other uh, different side of the uh, body. And moreover, if you uh, in human or animals, uh, you can uh, know that uh, the how memory cells are uh, <coughs> uh, created and then where they reside, either in bone marrow or peripheries. So the vaccine. Science gives you a very precise uh, and a more accurate uh, biological response. And temporary, it is also important, as uh, previous uh, speakers uh, suggested, we have uh, two types of immune response, which is adaptive immune response and an innate immune, immune response. So the vaccine uh, immunogenicity and efficacy uh, requires this adaptive immune response to a uh, specific antigen immunized, while uh, this inflammatory response 
Uh, as a medical doctor, we call this inflammation. Uh, occurs at minute and hours and after, days after the infection or vaccination, which was uh, turned out to be very uh, precisely regulated by uh, each uh, molecules. So that, that in addition to antigen uh, 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 containing a pathogen or vaccine, uh, must contain a second signal, which is often we call this adjuvant, uh, activating an innate immune receptor, including the toll like receptors on uh, antigen presenting cells, to uh, produce second or third signals to the uh, naive T cells. Without it, actually, this goes to the uh, immunological tolerance, which is also important to maintain our uh, body. But with this additional second and third signal, including cytokines, you get a very robust T cell and B cell response. That's called immune response. And that is actually the vaccine immunogenicity and efficacy. Among, amongst this uh, adjuvant uh, receptor recognition, we are uh, pretty much focused on the uh, nucleic acid. 20 years ago, when everybody, if someone said nucleic acids are immunostimulatory, if most of the immunologists were laughing at us. But uh, then we were dreaming whether if they, we had a, a specific receptor for each uh, DNA and RNA, if you divide it into single and double-stranded, yes, it turned out to be true uh, more precisely with the uh, multiple receptors uh, on the membranes or cytosol uh, recognizing specific pattern of nucleic acid. Moreover, as Jean uh, Mark uh, suggested, we have specific adapter beneath of this receptor and then kinases. All those solid lines towards this specific Th1 or B cell or CT response, uh, which is the uh, effect of vaccine, are uh, absolutely true because with Dr. Shizu Akira uh, and other group, we have all the knockout of each molecule. If you delete these molecules, you lose this uh, solid line. And uh, this is true in uh, the whole body in mouse. But we don't know whether this is also uh, identical or equivalent in human. <coughs> Let me give you uh, one example of a single strand RNA recognition system as adjuvant. <coughs> um, I just give you a just summary uh, slides upon a lot of, um, after a lot of the work by many groups. So influenza virus uh, and a vaccine is uh, divided into three groups. One is the live attenuated virus, and second is you, you fix that uh, virus uh, with the whole maldehyde, uh, which is uh, called whole billion vaccine. And third is that on the right side uh, called split vaccines that you get every year as a seasonal vaccine. This is very uh, interesting because you remove all this uh, lipid and RNA from virus, so you get only ad antigen. What happens if you look at the innate immune response as an adjuvant effect, uh, live virus can infect and activate a variety of cells, including epithelial cells or macrophage or dendritic cells, so that uh, as a result, you, you get the huge uh, innate immune response, and then activate uh, both CD4 and 8 T cell response, as well as uh, antigen-specific B cell response. But if you fix the virus, you don't get the infection. So you get only uh, activation by specific uh, dendritic cell called PDC through toll-like receptor recognition of this viral RNA, activating and producing a lot of type 1 interferon. So the type 1 interferon is the adjuvanticity of this whole virion vaccine towards CD4 and then B cell response. This whole virion vaccine doesn't provide your CD8 T cell response well. The worst one is actually the seasonal vaccine that you get every year. It doesn't have any innate immune activator in it, so that in naive mice, or if you're a baby, you don't get any immune response. Why we are using this for every year? Because this is uh, giving you antigen as a recall antigen to activate memory CD4 T cell response. 
since you are exposed to flu virus by variety ways, you have a lot of CD4 memory T cell response so that you don't need the adjuvant, rather you get the antigen recall to get the boosting of CD4 memory T cells. So by knowing and then, uh, analyzing this innate immune response, you can dissect three different uh, type of vaccine by adjuvanticity uh, to activate innate immune system. And nucleic acid adjuvants are divided into many types, but since I don't have a time, I would rather go into this uh, DNA double sun DNA recognition system. After uh, Dr. Akira pub, um, found that tor like receptor 9 is a, re a receptor for CPZ oligonucleotides, or DNA, we realized that there's an independent uh, recognition pathway which occurs in the inside of the cells, especially in cytosol. And then it was two, around 2002 or three. And then for the ne next three, uh, five, six years was a dark era that no one knew the uh, second receptors. But kept, people kept publishing cell nature science, saying that uh, they identify a receptor for double sun DNA. All of it, except this one, turned out to be wrong, uh, which is called CGAS. Um, recognized double sun DNA producing a cyclic dinucleo called CGAM that activates stink through TBK1. That was the also um, in interesting adjuvant pathway for DNA vaccine. Why uh, the cytosolic DNA recognition is important because uh, you have a different uh, interesting uh, vaccine uh, vector called DNA, plasmid DNA vaccine that is uh, consisted of plasmid DNA encoding a, a gene of interest of your antigen. And that once it's transfected into muscle or DC, they produce the antigen and then uh, turn out to uh, uh, pro uh, present the antigen directly or cross-presentation pathway towards TA, uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells. Why this process? Uh, occurs, you have this DNA itself or metabolite of DNA, including uh, uh, the CGAS mediated CGAM or uh, RNA polymerase medi mediated uh, or uh, this, uh, um, transcribed RNA, or as a final metabolite of DNA as a uric acid, can activate in an immune response. We knew that uh, TBK1, which is the beneath of sting like uh, sting uh, receptor, is the key factor for uh, adjuvanticity of this DNA vaccine. So we kept dissecting each pathway of immune recognition of these compounds uh, of DNA plasmid. We realized that uh, adjuvant effector, adjuvant uh, pathway, is through this TBK1. So that was the endogenous adjuvant of DNA vaccine. Uh, recently, um, we realized that, of course, the uh, DNA in the body, we focused uh, originally from uh, invading microbes, but we realized that um, a lot more DNA comes from our own body through apoptosis or necrosis or necroptosis, and recently through uh, neutrophil extracellular traps called netosis. Uh, produce a lot of uh, large amount of DNA. Uh, actually, even the netosis spit out their own genomic DNA, DNA as a, like a net to the extracellular milieu. Why I'm mentioning about this is, is because when we are uh, analyzing, uh, working on the um, very conventional adjuvant called aluminum salt, we realized that aluminum salt injections cause very similar uh, biological phenomena similar to netosis. <clears throat> so aluminum adjuvant, you may not know, but you get injection of this uh, dozens of times by different uh, vaccine when you are a baby. And this has been used for uh, more than 80 years as a safe adjuvant, but of course it has a limitations uh, if you're working on allergy immunology, 
you know, alum is the best uh, adjuvant to induce uh, antigen specific IgE, which is side effect of this adjuvant. And the mechanism action was were much more controversial. In 2008, uh, some groups suggest that the not like receptor, like now NLRP3, was the uh, receptor for alum for inflammasome activations. But uh, uh, and then, uh, but it wasn't uh, the case for the ad its adjuvanticity. That time we started working on this aluminum, aluminum adjuvant, which was 2008. And they say aluminum acts on the in vivo as a uh, antigen depot, which you keep the antigen with the alum, releasing slowly. That was. Uh, described in the immunology textbook for last years, decades, which turned out to be wrong. And uh, NARP3 uh, activation from macrophage to produce IL-1 beta was true in vitro, but it was, it was nothing to do with the adjuvanticity. And uh, interestingly, in same to 2008, uh, the Belgian group suggests the aluminum adjuvant induce uric acid, and that activates the dendritic cells. This is an important uh, pathway for adjuvanticity, they concluded. Coincidentally, I was writing a review article about the DNA metabolism. DNA is metabolized through ne nucleotides, nucleoside, and it turns out to be uric acid. Once uric acid gets crystal, they can activate NLRP3 to inflammasome activation. So while I'm making this figure, I realized that isn't that uric acid induced by aluminum as, uh, adjuvant is due to the DNA. And then uh, we inject this uh, alum with ovarian protein into mouse peritoneum and I measure the uric acid. Yes, it was reproducible, great. But what was the source of uric acid? Yes, it was DNA. So we measured DNA. It, it, the amount of DNA was much more beautiful in those uh, dependency and time uh, kinetics. What is the source of double strand DNA in the peritoneum after injecting aluminum? Yes, we looked for the dead cells. And the dead cells was enormously increased in the peritoneum. Then we now realize that uh, actually there was a Thomas Maria, Maria from the uh, University of Liège, Belgium, came into, uh, as a PhD student, came into my lab, did the, this simple experiment. He injected alum and took this uh, 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 peritoneal lavage. And look at the microscope simply, in the phase contrast, you see some cells. When you st stain with the hex, you see something, DNA, inside the cells and outside the cells. That was very similar to nets. But originally, we call this as a vaccinology, it's called alum depot, which is the live cells uh, cluster. But if you stain with the hex or DAPI, you see these nets of DNA, very stable for a long time. And then we took this other DNA from liver as a genomic DNA, and then uh, asked whether this, our genomic DNA is as potent as alum, as adjuvant. As you see, when you inject ovalumin with our genomic DNA or alum, it was as equally potent for inducing antigen-specific IgG1 and IgE. The Thomas, he did the most important experiment here, but very simple. So he did ovarian alum injection to peritoneum and took this uh, lavage and then spin down cells and alum and took this supernatant and inject back to the naive mouse. And naive mouse developed very specific antibody to uh, ova immediately in 10 days. But when he pretreated this uh, sub, um, lavage with DNAs. As you see, you see no antibody response. So interpretation of this simple experiment is that there is no alum, but something that induced by alum 
sensitive to DNAs was uh, has a, a shows adjuvanticity to the injected ova. So I don't show the all the data. If you look at the uh, read the textbook, first sentence of adjuvant will be aluminum salt, but we can conclude that alum is not adjuvant anymore. So what is it? It is just simply adjuvant inducing factor rather than adjuvant itself. And especially called damage associated molecular pattern, that includes our own host DNA. And we, at the same time, we publish uh, differently. And alum can activate macrophage directly, inducing phos uh, phagolysosome disruption. That uh, stress goes to uh, SYK signaling activation, produce a lot of prostaglandin E2. TG2 is adjuvant uh, modifier, not the inducer. Uh, but those uh, uh, multiple factors induced by aluminum salt in vivo cause the adjuvant effect. So what we learn from these kind of studies is that, um, yes, pumps and dumps are everywhere now in the immunology uh, textbook or journals. But we know now we have to look at carefully what have, what's going on in the injected site rather than uh, inside of syringe, uh, where the cells are dead, cells are coming into, and same, uh, even cells are leaving the injected site, like the dendritic cells, towards the uh, lymph draining lymph node. In the draining lymph node, the dendritic cells are not the only cell types who take the antigen. This is the two types, two distinct uh, type of macrophage beneath of the uh, surface of uh, the uh, lymph node. Those are the majority of uh, cells that get the majority of antigen. And those yellowish adjuvant, uh, sorry, um, and antigen holding macrophage uh, 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 keeps uh, keep uh, antigen and adjuvant for a long time. And these blue and red cells are CD4 and 8 T cells as if they are coming and getting this antigen from them. So knowing that, uh, we need, really need to know, uh, see uh, what's going on spatially and temporary. And then the second uh, talk, uh, the last part of my talk is the, um, the work um, comes from that um, alum, aluminum salt studies. So uh, Dr. Kuroda, who came to my lab, says, what would happen if adjuvant antigen inhaled into the lung? I thought it was a stupid idea to inject alum into the lung. But does this situation occur in case of PM2.5 exposure or pollen analogy? That was a uh, hypothesis by Dr. Kuroda. And then I realized that actually he told me the aluminum and silica, which is a beautiful adjuvant, are actually the major component of PM2.5 because it's, uh, it's from sand. So that it made, that it made sense to inject aluminum and silica into the lung. And his hypothesis was the particle, including PM2.5, you inhalate. And then you think that you went to a dirty place. And then you go back to the, uh, your own place with a lot of forest, clean place, but full of allergen. So what would happen if you get this, uh, simulat not simultaneously, but consequent? So when he did that, uh, ovarmin plus alum through a different administration routes, including intratracheal, and then turn out the over-specific IgE was the highest in, if you inject uh, ova plus ala into the lung directly through intratrachea. Far better than any other route that allergy immunologist does. And then what happens to the lung? And when we realized that probably rather than simultaneous inhalation of both those two, uh, the latter uh, sequential in inhalation of these two uh, allergen and then particle could be the case. So he did this uh, consequential um, intratracheal in, uh, inhalation of alum first and then allergen second as an over. 
And then you see, even um, over IgE and IgG1, two weeks after aluminum in, in, uh, intratracheal intra installation, you get huge amount of Ig and IgG1 to inhalate it over, suggesting that it doesn't have to get inhalated simultaneously. And that's, that was uh, uh, extremely um, potent, so that uh, not only alum, but silica also had a, a very similar effect. And then why this happens? Yes, the DNA, as I showed you, as a mechanism action adjuvant, uh, alum induces a lot of DNA in the lung, but the TBK1 knockout mice, which lacks this DNA immune activation pathway, did, didn't have any impact on this IgE, so the DNA was not important. After a long time of screening, we, we finally came to the oldest cytokine called IL-1-alpha, but not IL-1-beta was the important key that IL-1-alpha was induced a lot in the buff, um, but not IL-1-beta for a long time, until two weeks. And this IL-1-alpha was induced by alum in alveolar, by mac alveolar mac macrophage, while alveolar mac macrophage can respond to LPS to produce stop other cytokines. So very specifically, alum activate aluminum alveolar macrophage to release iron alpha. Why this iron alpha came out? Because they killed the cells. So alveolar macrophage was killed uh, by alum silica, as you see on the orange, while LPS doesn't kill, but induce iron alpha. So different mechanisms. And alveolar macrophage is the specific cell to respond alum and silica, while other peritoneal macrophage or in vitro epithelial cell doesn't respond to alum. What does IL-1 alpha do? We realize that in the lung uh, histology, there's some B cell cluster com coming out just by alum injection. What are those B cells? To make the story short, it was uh, induced bronchus associated lymphoid tissue. So it's a lymphoid tissue developed new newly. This was beautiful uh, lymphoid tissue in, uh, that contains germinal center, even plasma glass and small T cell area. And that is gone if you do the same experiment with IL-1 receptor knockout mice, suggesting the IL-1 is the bottleneck cytokine to get uh, to develop eye bound. Vice versa, just injecting OBA plus recombinant iron alpha produces a lot of eye bound and inducing huge amount of IgE, which was showing that IL-1 alpha was uh, sufficient to produce eye bound and over specific IgE. Uh, due to the time limitation, I didn't show all the data, but this is what's going on, that alum is adjuvant, but when you inhalate, it's toxic to produce allergy by killing the alveolar macrophage, releasing IL-1 alpha, inducing a lot of eyeball towards the Ig induction. So that please be careful, if you go to dirty uh, area, don't come back to the forest with a lot of pollen, then you get allergy through killing the alveolar macrophage, releasing iron and alpha. So adjuvant mechanism action that includes nucleic acid releasing, uh, or, uh, or I'm sorry, um, adjuvant it can be exogenous uh, pumps, um, but also uh, acts as an endogenous adjuvant, like a nucleic acid within the virus or DNA vaccine. But also, and the, uh, the third uh, one, as a damage associated molecular pattern inducer, uh, like even particle alum, is a strong inducer of DNA and then killer of uh, alveolar macrophage to produce iron alpha. So, um, I'm just giving you a recent um, story of, uh, about um, innate immune recognition of nucleic acid by giving an example as aluminum adjuvant. So I'd like to thank all my uh, colleagues, uh, including uh, people in the Nibion and collaborators, 
and an uh, IFRAC in Osaka University. Thank you for your attention.